Republicans out here banning books? Hell yeah! Get rid of all them books! My freedom was threatened when Carhartt made all their employees get the jab! Thanks to all them liberals! Well, no more! I don't want to read about no holocaust or Japanese internment! I don't want to read about nothing! Reading is for communists! Now, perhaps you found that clip funny. Maybe you thought it was too much. But what's important about that is I want to talk just about the framing and how the GOP establishment, not the voters, but how the actual establishment views their voters and then also how the Democratic Party views the left-wing voting base. And by left-wing, I, I mean progressives all the way just in, you know, to corporate liberals. Um, just that whole perspective. If I don't agree with it, it ain't history. I got 1776 tattooed on my inner eyelids. I can't blink without seeing freedom. Now, that right there, you know, sure we laugh at that, but that's actually how the Republican Party sees a huge voting, uh, a huge chunk of their voting base. That's why we know they continuously throw things like critical race theory all over the place, banning this book, banning that book, you know, hyper focusing on eliminating, uh, you know, trans rights and just making life more difficult, completely unnecessarily for trans people as often and as much as they can. You know, just hyper-focusing on still things like we need Trump back to build the wall. All of those types of things, while we know the Republican Party is the biggest you know, corporate giveaway institution in the world. But then on the flip side, we have the Democratic Party, who continuously pushes that image of the Republican voting base as well. But... They want to, you know, do things like, oh, we got Katanji Brown Jackson on the Supreme Court, which is awesome. But that is just pandering as well. If you just dangle that in front of people, but don't pass any real policy. Freedom ain't about reading. It's about blindly following a nationalist ideology and violently ignoring anything that conflicts with it. How is it that Joe Biden's signature proposal, Build Back Better, still hasn't been passed and he's not being aggressive about it at all? It's, it, this is his legacy. This is, you know, he, he's been trying to be president for a very long time. Now that he's here, you're not even going to fight for a signature legislation. I mean, you're going to let Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, people who are thoroughly corrupt. I mean, we know Joe Biden is corrupt as well, but again, you're dealing with other corrupt people. You can bend them, you can break them, and you're not even going to try. How is it that we have the Republican Party that's completely unserious and completely unfocused, and yet here we are with Joe Biden doing absolutely nothing about student loan debt that's any type of significant, and then whatever they do, they don't even talk about it. They don't talk about what they've done in the healthcare system. They don't talk about what they've done for the student loans that they have forgiven. forgiven. You have to kind of work in politics and really look for that type of information. But the general public has absolutely no idea what Joe Biden's doing. And that's why he's so unpopular. My doctor said my cholesterol was too high. I said, piss off, Democrat, and found a better doctor. His legal name is Keystone Light McFartnoise, and his power of attorney belongs to a Rottweiler. He is a true patriot. The only book anyone ever needs is the Bible, which I love but have never actually read. Yeah. And then we have, you know, Kamala Harris, who at this point looks like she's just completely just been swept under the table. Um, much of her own doing. She's not taking advantage of this time to really, really have that strong presence within the country, within the media, within the Democratic Party that she really could. And I say that really, really to focus on the fact that there's really no viable replacements for Joe Biden at this point. I mean, you know, I'm sure there's many people who would like to see Bernie Sanders run again, but I mean, that's probably not going to happen. And even if it did, that wouldn't be a sure bet. And then we don't have anyone else that's any type of identifiable who's largely popular, who really, really could take down an incumbent in an, effect, in an effective way that we really, really can trust. Now, those people may present themselves and start really getting things going, but until they do, all we got is Joe Biden going against someone like Donald Trump, who has just a lot more fire and fervor within the base than Joe Biden, who's continuously losing popularity. So it's certainly a possibility that Donald Trump becomes president again. And if he does, then it's going to be significantly more difficult for the Democrats to get any other wins because who's going to want to stand behind a party so weak to lose to Donald Trump two times?